Hello Blazers, City of Jabbar Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, Hi guys, Zoon today, welcome to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a live update, I guess, an update on my Russian military draft situation. Basically guys, long story short, I am not being drafted into the Russian military, and also, I did it completely legally, and there's a lot of really funny stories I can tell uh, about my entire process of going through this. It was very hard, it was very long, but finally I've achieved it. So here's the thing, if you guys are not aware, I've actually made a video about this a while ago, but Russia has obligatory military conscription for males. So any male from the age of 18 to 27 is susceptible to being actually drafted into the military and has uh, to serve one year. And it's a very big topic of discussion in Russia. A lot of people say, oh, you know, we should make the army non-obligatory. We should only have a contract army. And there's other people that are saying, no, it's great. You know, you, we're making men out of these kids in the army. To me, it always just seemed like those people are coping with the fact that they lost one or two years of their life, but whatever. Here's the thing though, guys. I have a lot of respect for the military. I just never want to be part of it or never wanted to be part of it and I don't think I ever will. And there's a lot of reasons for that I cover it in my Russian army video. Essentially the Russian army, uh, the pay is extremely small. You essentially have like barely any human rights in there, barely any way of contacting people. There's a lot of there's a lot of issues between the staff and the people serving. Within the people serving as well there's a lot of uh, infighting going on etc. A, a lot of messed up things happening. But for me honestly the biggest reason why I didn't want to go to the Russian army in, in general was just because I'm a YouTuber, right? This is my livelihood. I make money on this. You know, I've, I've worked for years to build this channel and I can't just disappear for a year and not upload a single video. You know that, right? In Russian army, you have no access to technology. They take away your phone. You can't bring a camera in there, obviously. You can't vlog in the army. For some reason, people think that you can't do that. People were saying, oh, no fuckers, go to the army. You're gonna make videos there. No, I can't. What do you think military service is? You think they're gonna let me vlog there? Come on. So yeah, for me, that's the biggest reason why I didn't want to go. It's just because I can't disappear appear for a year because my channel is just gonna die and everything I've been building for years is just gonna you know be taken away essentially just because of my complete absence and lack of activity and so I worked really really hard to get this thing right here this thing right here is called Vayani Bilet it's uh, like it's basically a sort of a document that's that's given to the people who have either finished their military service actually served or the people who have some medical conditions that do not allow them to serve and essentially that's the way I got it that's exactly how I did it because thankfully I've been blessed by the gods with a a beautiful medical condition known as asthma. Asthma is one of the syndromes, medical conditions that is in the list of the conditions that uh, basically bar you from being drafted into the Russian military. Essentially, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You can't be running out on the field, you know, doing all these things where you're out of breath and you're gonna die. I've had asthma ever since I was a little kid and very good thing is that my parents kept records of everything. I have like a giant ass, like a book of medical records ever since I was like three years old, just full of, uh, you know, notes about me having asthma up to like my current age, you know, 23, I just turned 23. So I was pretty sad on that. And that's one of the biggest things you need uh, in order to sort of be able to prove to the military draft office that you have a condition, you need to have the documents. Also, I need to add this. A lot of you guys probably might be saying, wait, you studied in university, right? Why would you be drafted to the army? Here's the thing, uh, studying in Russia doesn't actually exclude you from being drafted into the military. I, it just delays it, postpones it essentially. After you're done with university, after you finish it, you can get drafted as well. And so in September, I finished my university and in October already, in the beginning of October, I got my message that uh, tell, basically told me to come pack my bags and go serve Russia. However, I had a plan. I was not dumb. Basically, I just read a lot of uh, information about it, the way it's supposed to be done. Essentially, I came prepared with all of my medical documents, made copies of them and everything, stuff like that. I came in with a full list saying, hey guys, check me out. I have asthma. You know, you can't do anything with me. It's also kind of funny and weird coming to the draft office where there's like, when you're like, you know 22 because there's all like it's all like 17 and 18 year olds there and you feel like an old ass actually i was surprised by the way the workers were pretty nice because online if you read about the workers in his draft offices you, you, you just read the most terrible shit people say they're like the most corrupt the most evil people alive i was actually pretty surprised with how uh polite and uh, not decent the workers in the draft office were but it's funny though because in the draft office they kind of treat you like uh they treat you like you're 18 or 17 or 16 still whatever still whatever like i came in to the first person who was like uh, filling my documents or whatever and she was like so what you gonna you gonna go 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 uh, serve in the army with like this condescending ass son I was like no I don't think I will you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> so here's the thing. Usually what happens is that when you go to the uh, draft office for the first time, you have to go through a medical checkup right then, right then and that. Essentially, the way this works is that people come in, they go through a bunch of doctors, and essentially the people who don't have any medical records actually get their uh, their documents filled right there. Like, hey, you know, yeah, you're, you're perfect. Uh, come to this date and we're going to take you away. That's essentially what, how it works. But since I came prepared, I, uh, I it was a little bit, a little bit longer for me. So the medical checkup in the draft office is always just hilarious. You're just sitting there in the corridor talking to all these guys that, you know, are, are in a rut with you as well. It's just like looking through to each other's eyes with pain. <laughs> I mean, there's always a few dudes that are like, yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna serve, I'm a patriot, you know, those kind of guys, but the majority of them are just sitting there like, please, please help. <laughs> Anyway, it's just funny because some doctors are actually pretty nice. One of the doctors actually complimented my haircut, which I found very uh, surprising because I thought everybody was gonna hate me. But there were a couple of like boomer doctors that just literally call everybody like dumbasses and retards. Like there's this, there was this one doctor who had like a very bad speech impediment and it's literally impossible to understand what the fuck he's saying. Like the way he's speaking, you can't even tell if he's telling you to uh, undress or put something on or put something, like you can't tell. And then if you do the wrong thing because it can't even fucking hear what he's saying he curses you out and calls you a retard literally like verbatim not even exaggerating right now he calls you a retard dumbass because you don't understand him speak fucking proper language please then i would understand anyway so that happens and essentially what's going on uh, at that stage for somebody like me who has a pre-existing medical condition they basically say okay cool we see that you have this medical condition that technically bars you but you need to prove to us that you actually have it yes here's the thing the way this works in russia is that if you bring all your medical documents it's not even it's it, with uh with stamps on them signed by multiple doctors that it doesn't matter it's not enough for them because the russian military draft office needs to send you to a hospital actually owned by the military draft office to uh for an additional checkup to prove that you actually have the medical condition that you say you have so essentially they just don't believe any doctors that do not belong to the military draft office i guess so keep in mind this was the beginning of october right and i only finished this entire process recently in January so this took uh, like what four months four months of excruciating pain guys because uh, here's the thing here's what happens I got sent to a hospital some buttfuck nowhere on the outskirts of the city in the in the in the neighborhood I've never been with before some real gopnik hood shit and here's the thing the location was just like so bad like this hospital that uh, the checkups were going uh, were happening at first of all it was super crowded by all these guys like you know sent from military draft office just like myself and so they uh, gave me a couple of things I need to do, a couple of doctors I need, I need to visit, a couple of tests I need to take, and uh, a couple of analyses, whatever. And I actually passed the majority of it really quickly, within like a week or two weeks, which is really good. And they actually gave me a period of one month, or I think three weeks uh, initially, to uh, finish this entire checkup and come back to, uh, you know, prove, approve my... Uh, my diagnosis. But there was a big problem because uh, there was like a final doctor who I thought was final, who wasn't even final. He was like uh, three, three, three steps before actual final doctor. <laughs> Essentially, the doctor I really needed to visit, who would like actually uh, wrap everything up, was just fucking gone uh, somewhere. You know, he was just gone. Like the people working at the like the registration desk in the hospital didn't even know if he was like sick or on uh, on vacation or whatever. And here's the worst fucking part. I already told you that this hospital was in Bum fuck nowhere, right? You think, you guys, you, you would think, okay, cool. I had to essentially check up all the time if the doctor's still there. You guys might say, okay, that's easy. Just call the office, you know, just call the hospital and be like, hey, uh, you know, is the doctor there? He's already, he's working? No? Okay, cool. I'll call you back in a week, right? No, uh, because their phone number didn't work. And uh, it never works. It never will work. They just don't have a phone. They don't have a fucking phone. <laughs> So basically what I had to do is that every time I wanted to find out if a doc if the doctor actually came back from his vacation or his uh, sick leave, right? I had to physically uh, drive there to that hospital, like in bumfuck nowhere in the outskirts of the city. Drive there for like 30 minutes just to ask one question, just to ask, hey, is the doctor back? They would tell me no, and I'm like, okay, sick, and I have to go back for another 30 minutes. <laughs> This is the dumbest shit of all time. Now, here's the thing. As far as I understand, it's only me because um, 
I've heard actually uh, other stories of other guys in there that were, um, uh, you know, passing a similar additional checkup like me, but they had other conditions, not asthma, it was something different. And there was like a guy who, who whose address is very similar to mine, and he actually was sent to the hospital that's literally like right next to my fucking uh, old apartment. So that guy didn't have to drive 30 minutes, but because I have asthma, which is a condition that requires a certain doctor who's supposed to be in this bumfuck nowhere hospital, which he's not even fucking there, but I was sent to that that bum fuck nowhere hospital it's ridiculous dude it's ridiculous and so that doctor just like never came for like two months <laughs> And here's the worst part of it, uh, the uh, draft office actually gives you like a period, so initially they gave me like a period of three weeks to uh, finish the entire checkup, and then I have to go in and report essentially if I've, uh, if I've done it, and uh, you know, show them the results. So essentially I had to go in and say, hey guys, uh, my doctor is just gone, so I can't do it, and they were like, okay cool, uh, we'll give you two extra weeks on top of that, in two weeks you have to come to us again and tell us what's, what's going on. You tell you guys, as, as I've said, the, doc the doctor was gone for like two months. So in two weeks, I had to go there again to say, hey guys, nothing still. And they were like, okay, two more weeks. <laughs> and essentially, it, like, it, this shit repeated like four times. It's like four, it's four weeks in a row, four times in a row. I had to go in every two weeks to just say, you know, nothing's fucking changed. The doctor's just gone. Why? This is the dumbest shit of all time, man. So yeah, after the doctor actually came back, I finally got the, got to the doctor and they were like, okay, now you have to wait two more weeks. Uh, apparently I thought that this is gonna be, this is gonna be it, right? Like I went into the doctor with all the new now uh, tests and everything, proven my disease, uh, proven my, my disorder, my condition, whatever you, you could call it. And they were like, okay, cool. We need another two weeks to take a look at it. I was like, for fuck's sake, man. So like, this is the issue. It wasn't even like the red tape in the draft office or whatever. The draft office was stellar, okay? The draft office, I didn't have a single bad experience with them in this entire process. It was the fucking hospitals just messing up and being shitty. And like this is so bad as well is because all those times, you know, I had to go into the hospital physically, be there, and it's a kind of a problem, right? Amidst amidst the coronavirus pandemic. You know, you wanna you wanna may, may, maybe uh, stay away from hospitals at that time. You know, you wanna stay inside. You wanna be away from the hospitals where people with like body temperatures and like who are feeling ill come in to get their checkups if they have coronavirus or not. I was literally fucking in the midst of the coronavirus epidemic for like four months in a row because literally I had to just go in there and uh, like every every two or three days I was like in the hospital in the hospital for like four hours a day, essentially just sitting there waiting for my turn to just visit some doctor for twenty seconds because the draft office doesn't believe that my d d diagnosis is real until I prove it's real for the second time for some reason. And it's kind of surprising because throughout that entire period I did not get sick once. I did not the coronavirus. Maybe I'm like a I'm like a uber human now, you know, uber mensch because I've uh, I've, con <laughs> I've contracted so many strains of corona during those four months, you know, seeing all these being in close proximity to the, all these sick people that are like I'm literally immune to anything now. I'm I'm indestructible. I think that's what it is. Anyway, that being said, essentially what happened is is that uh, finally, uh, I think in about December, I actually ended up getting the documents from the uh, ho hospital belonging to the military draft office, or like, and they said, okay, cool, you do have asthma. I was like, Jesus Christ, thank you, finally. I, 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 re I already told you guys that I had all the medical proof needed fucking five months ago, but whatever, cool. And so I came into the draft office and they were like, okay, sick, uh, now we just need you to wait until after New Year's. Come to us after New Year's because for now, like, we're too busy with the coronavirus going on and everything i was like okay bets and there you go uh you know recently just in january uh finally i got my uh i got my documents uh and now i am free from the wrath of the uh, russian military service uh, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a story. Uh, <laughs> you know, guys, once again, I'm just really blessed, just really happy that I've had asthma since I was, I was a kid because it's one of these uh, conditions that usually is very, very solid. Like, people just don't get drafted into the military with that condition, you know? And uh, I just, I just, I'm just just really happy because I didn't have to do anything illegal. I didn't have to get, give a bribe or anything like that because that's the thing that happens as well. Uh, there's a lot of talks about bribes uh, in the Russian military draft offices. People, like, essentially just bribe the 
offices there, you know, or doctors there to, you know, write in a uh, certain diagnosis for them. Now, the way my document actually works is that I'm actually considered not completely unable to serve. I'm uh, in this uh, sort of backup squadron kind of thing, whatever. So essentially, what the way my thing works is that uh, I'm considered fit to serve only under military circumstances. So if America uh, strikes Russia, then yeah, I will be fighting your asses, but uh, I'm not supposed to serve in the regular, like, uh, you know, military service, you know? I'm just too strong, a six foot four Russian alpha male to actually, uh, to actually fight y'all. I'm too strong of a super soldier. Anyway, yeah, there's a lot of bribery going on, and here's the thing, I've actually heard a lot of different uh, s uh, sums of money being thrown around, I've heard anything from... This is a big topic in Russia, right? Every single male has to go through this, so this is discussed all the time on TV, on, on the internet, within just people in general, and I've heard, like, on TV, people say that in, like, rural Russia, you can buy or bribe, uh, you know, like, the military draft office for, uh, like, 100 to 150,000 rubles, and I've heard of some uh, going up to, like, 300,000, so, like, 200,000 in Moscow, or even, like, 400,000 or something like that. Just absolutely ridiculous. It's expensive as shit, right? And also, like, it's literally illegal, too, so you should not do that, right? Never, never do that shit. Not ju even just the transaction of it, like, when you make the bribes legal, actually even uh, asking for it is very illegal. I mean, usually do people don't just come in and are like, okay guys, can I just fucking pay you so that you, you know, uh, don't don't make me serve? It doesn't happen like that. Usually, you know, this stuff happens to like mutual uh, friends or be like, you know, connections, whatever. But yeah, actually even promising to make the bribe or trying to make that, uh, you know, uh, partnership actually can also uh, get you banned. Uh, I mean banned, I mean jailed because it's illegal. You're bribery, you, you, you're being, you, you're basically doing the corruption. You're the corrupt official now. How does it feel? So yeah, I guess that is, you know, pretty much almost all there is to it, to the story of how I, um, you know, ended up not going to the Russian military. It was a very long, very tiring, very, like, dangerous, I guess, experience because I had to visit the coronavirus ridden hospitals for, like, four months in a row, which is not good. Not good at all. But, you know, I persisted. There were times where I was so pissed off with the entire situation, you know, having to go to this bumfuck nowhere hospital, all the red tape and those hospitals whatever it was just ridiculous having to sit through like lines that are like hours long and everything just to get like a signature on some dumbass paper or whatever you know classic Russian hospital stuff basically oh by the way before uh, actually I end this video I need to clarify that some of you guys might say oh you can actually you know ask a private hospital to do this stuff no here's the thing the military draft office does not consider private hospital uh, documents or uh, any sort of uh, diagnosis from the private hospitals to be truthful at all because they think that like in, at the private hospital you can like bribe somebody or whatever to give you the diagnosis you need or whatever so you only need to come there with uh, documents actually from governmental clinics from governmental government funded uh, regular hospitals you cannot come there with documents from private clinics so that is also a very big part of it why you have to you know sit through all these lines and everything you can't go to a private hospital you, it's just not a possibility if you're uh, you know dealing with the Russian military draft so yeah it's a big meme but, uh, you know, thankfully it's over and, uh, yeah, I ju I'm just really, really happy and uh, I feel like this is a new side of a new stage in my life. I kind of finally finally feel like a free human being now that I'm, I don't have this thing hanging over my head. It's, it's, it's just great. It's just great. And it could have been, it could have went a lot worse because the Russian draft military officers sometimes like to just postpone it as long as possible so that you have to, like, go through this, you know, checkup, additional checkup, like, three times or whatever. Very happy with that. And yeah, guys, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys were interested to learn about the end to this epic story of my uh, Russian military draft experience. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like button and it as well, guys. Make sure to follow, so I mean, donate to my Patreon. Link is down in the description. It helps me out a lot, so I would gladly appreciate it. Also, if you guys want to support my channel, go to the link in the description as well. Buy my YouTube, so it's a nice little souvenir for yourself that you can buy and also support my channel. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.